Welcome back. In the last video we talked about why diffusion and osmosis by themselves were not good enough to filter out all the bad stuff, especially urea. And um, we talked about, we started talking about filtration and active transport. In this video we're actually going to go in more detail, cover them in more detail, and explain what, exactly what they are. So uh, the extra dot point says distinguish between active and passive transport and relate these processes occurring in the mammalian kidney. So I've got three different types of passive transport. So first one was diffusion. Like if you look here, if you look at this picture over here, you can see we have two test tubes. First, this happens first. First we have, like we can call it any, it might be gas, it might be ink. We have it all in one area. It's really concentrated in one area. It's a high concentration in one area. And there's nothing in that other area, no low concentration or no concentration in the other part of the beaker. What happens second is it actually goes from a high concentration to a low concentration. So it, it starts here, but then it moves to all sides to make sure that at the end, you can see it's even, like the red dots are even. So it's moved from high concentration all the way in that corner and evened out to all corners. Uh, and that's called diffusion. So diffusion is a movement from stuff, from substances from high concentration to low concentration. We had filtration. Remember, filtration was at high power. So these are the blood vessels, and there might be something in here. And to make sure that all of these get in, we have um, filtration happening. And filtration means that there's like a sieve, small holes in the actual um, Bowman's capsule. And you have that high power hose, which is the blood pressure, making sure that you can squeeze all that good stuff, uh, the stuff we want to get rid of, squeeze it into our kidneys. Right. Now it's filtration, so it's high pressure movement of material through like an area. We've got osmosis, so again we have the U-tube, this is called the U-tube, and this happens first. So like imagine we have, at the moment we have an area which has both equal amounts of water on both sides, but not equal amounts of solute. But we have a barrier which is closed, so we can't have any, can't have any um, movement between the two layers because that barrier is closed. But that second, what we do second is we open that barrier. So now it becomes a semi-permeable, semi-permeable, permeable layer. And what that means is um, it's it's halfway open. Um, we call that a semi-permeable membrane. Membrane actually. So it's halfway open. It's open enough that water can pass. So water can pass, but solutes are too big; they can't pass through. But what this means is that water can pass but solute can't and water moves from an area of low solute to an area of high solute. So you can see here we had three on this side and six on the one on the other side before we opened. When we open we still have three on the one side and six on the other side but water could go from that low solute area to the high solute area. And that meant that in the end the water is the one that moved and we have half as much water now on that one side than we do on the other side. And the other side has twice as much water. So water moved, solid state. And that's osmosis. And then we have active transport. Active transport is a movement of substances from a low concentration to high concentration. So you can imagine again this being our bombus capsule. There's two molecules of maybe amino acids here and maybe eight or ten on the other side. That would usually not happen for diffusion. Diffusion is from high concentration to low concentration. But active transport means we will be able to bring that over because active transport works from a low concentration to high concentration. But it says distinguish between the two, the two um, types, active and passive. And a big distinguishing feature is that active requires energy. Requires energy. That's why we can move stuff against the gradient. So, that because it requires energy, obviously that energy comes in the form of ATP. Whereas passive um, transport, so all of these types, diffusion, filtration, osmosis, this requires no energy. So that's the big, big, big um, difference between the two, requires no energy. But we haven't answered that syllabus dot point uh, full yet because it also says um, and relate these processes occurring in the mammalian kidneys. Now we actually know what these processes are. We still have to be able to relate them to the kidney and how this happens and what it does in the kidney itself. So what I have underlined here is a couple of areas. This might look a bit confusing and a bit full on, but I'll go for each dot point individually. Um, so filtration occurs at the Bowman's capsule. Remember this part here that I drew here? This was that filtration. So that early that beginning part, that's where filtration happens. Filtration happens at the Bowman's capsule. That's where all this stuff goes into the Bowman's capsule. Um, osmosis, that's the movement of water 
water from low solid to high solid. That happens in a few places. That actually happens at the proximal tube, the loop of Henle, and the distal tube. So this is the proximal tube, this part here. Loop of Henle is that part. And the distal tube is this part. So you have osmosis happening at all parts. Um, we have active transport, which is the movement uh, against the gradient, happens mostly at the proximal tube. So, and the reason why is because we can remove uh, poisons. So there might be too much poisons in our blood compared to our kidneys. So it wouldn't usually work through um, diffusion because diffusion is high concentration, low concentration. Uh, but we want to make sure we pump it, even if there's a low concentration in our blood compared to the kidneys. We don't want to keep any. We don't want to keep a single molecule of the drugs in our blood, so we make sure we get rid of that. And we get rid of that through active transport. And the other thing we get rid of through active transport is we reabsorb nutrients. Remember nutrients some like amino acids, glucose, and um, salts. We kind of want to keep them. So even if they're in our kidney, we will push them back. We will um, reabsorb them, and we do that through active transport. Because remember, like if you have a look at this picture again, there might be too much in the bloodstream compared to the kidney, but we still want to get rid of these two. We still want to have them back in our blood, and the way we can do that is for active transport. Um, diffusion. Diffusion is happens at the loop of Henle right here, and this is where we can reabsorb salt for diffusion, just at this one location right here. And we have, yeah, that is pretty much, so those were the main parts. We've got, um, so we may go over them again. Diffusion was from movement from high concentration to low concentration. Filtration was movement of, of small molecules uh, at high pressure. Osmosis was movement of water from low solid to high solid concentration. All these were passive transport, so they require no energy. Active transport was movement from a substance from a low concentration to a high concentration, so the opposite of diffusion, but that requires ATP, so it requires energy. And osmosis occurs at all stages of the nephron, at the proximal tube, at the loop of Henle, and at the distal tube. Uh, filtration happens only at the Bowman's capsule, right here, so that was that part. We have diffusion happening at the, at the loop of Henle to get rid of, to reabsorb some of our salts for diffusion. And active transport happens at our dis proximal tube, so we can get rid of, so we can excrete a poison and drugs from our blood into the kidney and so we can reabsorb so all the good stuff reabsorb it from our kidney into our blood so something like glucose like with that picture again glucose amino acids even the small amount that we have in our kidney we want to make sure we get that back into our blood even the small amount of glucose in our kidney we still want to make sure we get that back into our blood and we do that for active transport because that allows it allows us to get it back into our blood and uh, but yeah that requires energy so i hope that was helpful